Thursday, which I'm recording and broadcasting on Facebook after these short prayers. Om Jnana Timarandhasya Jnana Jnana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Cheva Narutamam Devim Saraswati Vyasam Tato Jayam Mudiraye Welcome dear devotees uh, to our Friday evening Krishna Katha and I'm just so happy that you chose this route to spend your Friday evening and uh, we have Kathy Mataji here with us who has made a reading order so Mataji do you want to read it out for the benefit of all yeah, of us sure. um, so it is Vindhyavali Mataji then Sukumar Radha Mataji Varshana Mataji Sadhana Mataji Simi Mataji Nira Mataji Aruni Mataji then uh, Sonia Mataji I will uh, correct the order and then I will read and then back to Vindhyavali Mataji look at that what an impressive reading. Hare Krishna. And please let me know if I missed someone. There you go. Okay, so let's get started. Vindavali Mataji, if you'll do us the honors. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and Lord Pranam Srinupati. Chapter 16, the divine and dominic, demonic. demonic natures. Text one, one to three. The Supreme Personality of God had said, fearlessness, purification of one's existence, cultivation of spiritual knowledge, charity, self-control, performance of sacrifice, study of the Vedas, austerity, simplicity, nonviolence, truthfulness, freedom from anger, renunciation, tranquil, tran tranquility, aversion in fault-finding, Compassion for all living entities, freedom from co covetousness, gentleness, modesty, steady, determination, vigor, forgiveness, fort fortitude, cleanliness, and freedom from envy and from the passion of passion, passion from honor. These transcendental qualities, O son of Bharata, belong to godly men endowed with divine nature. Text four, pride, arrogance, conceit, anger, harsh, harshness, and ignorance. These qualities belong to those of demonic nature of O son of Prita. Hare Krishna. So, Kamal Mataji. Thank you. Text five, the transcendental qualities are conducive uh, to liberation. Uh, Whereas the demoniac qualities make for bondage. Do not worry, O son of Pandu, for you are born with the divine qualities. Text 6, O son of Pritha, in this world there are two kinds of created beings. One is called divine and the other demoniac. I have already explained to you at length the divine qualities. Now hear from me of the demoniac. Varshana Mataji. Thank you so much, Mataji. Text seven, those who are demoniac do not know what to do, what is to be done and what is not to be done. Neither cleanliness nor proper behavior nor truth is found in them. Text eight, they say that this world is unreal with no foundation, no God in control. They say it is produced of sex desire and has no cause other than lust. Hare Krishna. Sadhana Mataji. Text nine, following such conclusions, the, de the demoniac who are lost to themselves and who have no intelligence, engage in unbeneficial, horrible works meant to destroy the world. Text 10, taking shelter of insatiable lust and absorbed in the conceit of pride and false prestige, 
the demoniac, thus illusioned, are always sworn to unclean work attracted by the impermanent. See me, Mataji? Uh, text 11. They believe that to gratify the senses is the prime necessity of human civilization. Thus, until the end of life, there is anxiety is, uh, of life, there is, anxiety is immeasurable, bound by a network of hundreds of thousands of desires and is absorbed in lust and anger. They secure money by illegal means for self gratification. The De demoniac person thinks so much wealth do I have today and I will gain more according to my schemes. So much is mine now and it will increase in the future more and more. He is my enemy and I have killed him and my other enemies will also be killed. I am the lord of everything. I am the enjoyer. I am perfect, powerful and happy. I am the richest man surrounding my aristocratic relative. There is none so powerful and happy as I am. I shall perform sacrifices. I shall give some charity and thus I shall rejoice. In this way, such persons are deluded by ignorance. Hare Krishna, Meera Mataji. Hare Krishna. Text 16. Thus perplexed by various anxieties and bound by a network of illusions, they become too strongly attached to sense enjoyment and fall down into hell. Text 17. Self-complacement and always impudent deluded by wealth and false prestige, they sometimes proudly perform sacrifices in name only without following any rules or regulations. Hare Krishna, Aruni Mataji. Um, text 18, bewildered by false ego, strength, pride, lust, and anger, the demons become envious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is situated in their own bodies and in the bodies of others and blaspheme against the real religion. Text 19, those who are envious and mischievous, who are the lowest among men, I perpetually cast into the ocean of material existence into various demoniac species of life. Vindya um, Bali Mataji. It's my turn, Sonia oh, Mataji. <laughs> Text 20, attaining repeated birth amongst the species of demonic, demoniac life or son of Kunti, such person can, persons can never approach me. Gradually, they sink down to the most abominable type of existence. Text 21, there are three gates leading to this hell, lust, anger, and greed. Every sane man should give these up for... They lead to the degradation of the soul. Hare Krishna. Khyati Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. Text 22. The man who has escaped these three gates of hell, O son of Kunti, perform acts conducive to self-realization and thus gradually attains the supreme destination. Text 23. He who disregards scriptural injunction and acts according to his own whims attain neither perfection nor happiness nor the supreme destination. Hare Krishna, Vindyavali Mataji. You might be reading on mute, Mataji. One should therefore understand what is duty and what is not duty by the regulations of the scriptures. Knowing such rules and regulations, one should act so that he may gradually be elevated. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Dandar Pranams. Okay, so this is time for reflection. And I see Adi Mataji has also joined us. This is fantastic. Adi, you able to read so I can add you into reading order? No, my kids are a bit loud right now. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Right. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Krishna Mataji. Uh, yes, Mataji, after uh, reading the whole chapter in the 24th, uh, one should therefore understand what is his duty, what is not duty by the regulations of the scriptures. So knowing your duty is the most important thing. Can you throw some light on this? 
apart from devotional service, what all should a devotee do? We touched upon that a little bit yesterday, right? Does anybody remember? About duty? Who's the one who was confused about what is the duty? Arjun. Arjuna, right? And so what was Arjuna's duty? To understand. Hmm? To understand God. As a Shatri had to find. Yeah, as a, as a soul, obviously, there's no other duty of the soul than to, um, than to just be, you know, uh, a servant of the Lord, right? But then we are here in this material world, right? So then we have got certain duties that we are supposed to do, right? And so how do I make sure that I don't get entangled in this material world while performing my material duties? By dedicating it to the Lord. Right. By dedicating the results of every activity and any activity to the Lord purifies that particular activity. Right. So Varishana Matsu, there'll, there'll always be a balance and uh, to, be, to be struck and to be maintained. There'll also be certain prioritizations that we have to do. For example, if you have promised that you're going to chant 16 rounds and then you have, you know, also a duty to keep in touch with some of the other people then you might put the chanting of the rounds on a higher priority. That's a higher duty that you have to do. So spiritual and transcendental duties are always at a higher level. And um, Prabhupada uses the terms good cause and a great cause, right? So is it, is it your duty to, um, to you know, spend your time cooking and, and giving food for those who are hungry? Yes, it is. Right? Is it your duty to give them spiritual enlightenment? Yes, that's a higher duty. So always remember that to be you have one has to be qualified to do a higher level duty, right? Has to be at a certain level to be able to perform higher level jobs. But um, for the for the lesser uh, duties, uh, on there are, there'll be very many who will be able to you know take that position and do that duty. For example, if you take a company, right? A company who has one CEO, one CFO like that, right? And but the managers are many. And below the manager, the workers are many, right? It's very easy, you know, to get a worker and substitute one worker for another worker. If there's some job to be done, this one can't do this, then this one can be brought in. But when it comes at that higher level, not everybody will be capable of, you know, performing those duties. And they, they are qualified to be a CEO. They are qualified to be a CFO. A CFO cannot do the job of a CEO properly, vice versa, like that. So one has to be... so. If you are qualified, if you're qualified to do the higher duties, higher level of duties, then that is your prime thing, that you do those duties first, right? But also at the same time, if we have to strike the balance because we live in a, in a society and we are surrounded by people who are sentient beings. So, you know, you will not hurt them very badly, but then you also, you will not get entangled with them also, right? Um, for example, Vaishya Prabhu gives a very nice um, um, incidence of when he went to, um, I'm forgetting the, the place, but I guess it was Vrindavan, and he went to meet his god brother. And so when he reached the god brother's home, there was a servant who opened the door, and so he asked, who are you? And then he said, my master is doing puja. And uh, so then, he, who are you? And then the servant you know, asked them to be seated and went inside and told him that, you know, Vaishya Prabhu is there. So his god brother stopped the prayers, stopped the prayers, came out, offered them water, etc., made sure that they were seated properly, and then said, I'm just going to go back and complete my prayers, and then I'll come back and join you. So that is also, you know, uh, such a nice balance that he made, right? Because it's also Vaishnava etiquette that if a Vaishnava is at your door, then, you know, you don't let them stand. And the other day I was just telling, um, um, Sukumal Radhe Mataji, that, you know, when, when I start the Zoom call, everybody's put in a waiting room. And it was before six o'clock or something like that. So I then quickly started, you know, it and brought her in as soon as I could. And she was saying, well, you didn't have to do that. And I was like, no, <laughs> when a Vaishnava is there at your door, which in this case was a Zoom door, then you don't let, have them hanging there. So whatever you're doing, you, you will always make a time. 
And if your intentions are, are clear, then Krishna from inside will, will, you know, will guide you. And uh, so always there will be like, you know, okay, so this is also my duty as a mom. This is my duty as a wife to do this and do that. Uh, but, you know, there are certain duties that you have to do um, to your special master and to Krishna. And then, then you, would, you would do that. Also, um, there would be certain duties that you have to do because you are in this body. It's your duty to keep this body clean. It's your duty to keep this body healthy. So you, we can't just say that, you know, I chant the whole day, I sit in one place and I do it. No, the body will decay if you do that. So you have to go out, take, take the box. You have to go out and take care of your health and so on and so forth, right? And then back to our scriptures here to know what is your duty and what is not your duty. I mean, some, some people just think that, you know, oh, well, Mr. X is a very good man. He takes care of, he earns very nicely. He works very hard. He takes care of his wife. He loves his wife. He loves his children. And somebody might think that he's the best person, <laughs> right? But where is God in all this, right? So sometimes we are, we are taught like that, that, you know, this is your duty for the, for the boys. Like, you know, you can get married. You'll have a wife. You'll have to take care of her. Yes, but the real care that you take of your wife is to bring her up spiritually. The real care that you take of your children is to bring them up spiritually. So that is, that, that is the duty, prime duty. And now you can be smart. Like, like a duty of a mom is to read stories to the kids. And Adi, Adi Mataji is nodding her head. <laughs> but then you can make a choice. What stories are you reading to them? Right? You can start with Krishna Katha very early and very young. So you're doing both the kinds of duties and you're making a nice balance um, between the two. I just have one question, Mataji. I've been, uh, my husband and I have been debating about it. If Let me know whenever it's the right time to ask. Yeah, please go ahead. I think I'm done. I was done. Oh, thank you, Mataji. Uh, so I was wondering, what is better, reading, chanting, or doing devotional service? Chanting. It's the dharma of the, of the yuga. And without proper chanting, you cannot do the other two. It's very, very important. And, and so all three are, are there. All three are, are important to do. But if you chant your rounds properly, the other things will follow nicely. The other things also become easy. In fact, <laughs> I remember Mali Mataji, who's our book distribution leader. She told me once that, you know, Shadda Mataji, whenever you go, because we used to assemble on Saturday in the temple from morning, do the morning uh, program. And then after that, we would all have prasadam and then go out for doing book distribution. And she said that, and which meant that, you know, class starts at 7.30 in the morning, which meant that I have to leave home at 6.30, which means, you know, getting up, getting ready. So no time to chant the rounds unless you get up at four. And, but she said that, you know, don't go out on book distribution unless you have completed your 16 rounds. Well, and I okay. noticed the difference, you know, I noticed the difference. The day you chant your 16 rounds, People take books from you left, right, and center. You find interesting people. They listen to the philosophy. The day you didn't, then, yeah, the rules are there. So chanting is, a, and also it's a yuga dharma. It's a dharma for this yuga, which is, dharma is also a duty. And um, this is the duty. What is duty? What is not duty? This is the prime duty. That you finish your rounds, you chant your rounds. Properly. So I'm, I'm really struggling to get to 16. Any ideas for me? I just don't have the time. Absolutely. And nobody told you to do 16. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> you can really start. Struggling. Yeah. Just start. So about goals, what do you know about goals? Goals have to be smart, right? They have to be simple, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely, right? So how do you bring that these elements into your into your day-to-day -day practice, right? So achievable as a mom with two young kids, is it achievable and a job and a career and all the seva that you do? Is it achievable to do 16, right? Maybe not at this time. So small daily increments, that's how you would reach them. Right? And then as you start chanting good rounds, go trying to ch chant good, um, if you try to chant 16 rounds, they might not be good. It's better to chant two good rounds. Because one good round leads to another good round. So good rounds will lead to more rounds and slowly the mercy of the <laughs> game will start flowing your way. And then, you know, you won't even know when you reach 16. It, it'll happen. Life will adjust. Everything will adjust. You just need to find the rhythm 
and the rhythm will start by going slowly and not very uh, very fast in the beginning especially when we are learning um, and i know you're not learning but this is for the general um, you know devotees who are all listening to, to this um, that when you're playing or when you're learning to play a musical instrument or when you are learning for example how to type or you learning how to use some machine even a knife in the kitchen right you just don't go very very fast right or typing very very fast in the beginning because it will be all wrong right rather they go they ask you to go very slow you know you know so may call an l k j a s d f and we call an l k j slowly in the beginning right and then after so by going this then your muscles will you know have the memory and then it will become a second nature and then slowly slowly the speed we increase the speed we increase the quantity the volume and so on and so forth so it's okay to set your goals which are you know measurable there we can measure how many rounds we chanted realistic are they realistic or not so if you are saying that i'm struggling because what happens is if we if we set goals which are not achievable then you'll give it up you'll give it up and mind is very bad <clears throat> the mind will convince you very nicely why it is not a good idea to chant <laughs> so start very slow and and you can go like you know this month i'm going to day or maybe this week or this fortnight i'm going to do only one round a day and the next month i'm going to do the next four fortnight two like that go next fortnight three if you struggle again come back to two and then so you'll keep on adjusting measuring adjusting measuring find your sweet point because chanting has to be a sweet activity right and you will do it <laughs> Rest assured, you'll reach. 16. Everybody reaches sixteen ultimately, so you'll reach sixteen and beyond. You'll do that, yeah. like that. Also, try to, um, although it's best to sit in one place and do all the sixteen rounds, you know. But then, in the beginning, as you are adjusting and bringing in this new activity into your life, then you might even consider that okay, one round I'll do when you are on two. One round I'll do before the kids get up, and one round I'll do after they are asleep. Yeah. like that you can also do okay? because once the kids are awake then they take over the house <laughs> you're no longer the owner of the house they do they they, they, they rule <laughs> and when they go to sleep then you then you pick up your other activities like that so in the beginning it's okay as long as you are chanting good rounds and you are enjoying it okay that helps thanks much yeah, thank i have to be very guilty about it but yeah, <laughs> yeah. i keep trying yes yes yeah yeah any other reflections or questions before we go to shrimad bhagavatam thank you so much for your answer mate very i understood the thing thank you so much yeah actually that that was very reassuring about uh, not having to chant 16 rounds now i don't feel so guilty <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah see um, social this it should be joyfully performed there should be joy I'm standing. I'm happy, right? So, make it a happy goal that you achieve and you get a sense of achievement. And then the, remember, have faith in the power of the holy name. Because what is holy name? Krishna's name and Krishna are non-difference. It's Krishna really on your tongue. And so, when Krishna is there on your tongue, you better pay attention to him. <laughs> Because if you don't pay attention to Krishna, You see what he did when Yashoda didn't pay attention for, to him for a little while. Went away to take care of the milk. What did he do? He broke all the parts. <laughs> so you don't want Krishna to be breaking all the parts, right? So um, when Krishna is there, when you're calling out the holy name, right? Like for example, if your husband calls you, "We are the come here," and then you go there, and then he doesn't talk to you. He's like he's at his computer, and you feel annoyed, right? <laughs> Same thing about Krishna, holy name. when we are calling out to krishna hare krishna and radha hare krishna they'll come they've already come because you chanted the name and now that they have come we have to take care they are your guests now so we have to take care of them we have to you know be pleasant to them we can't ignore them so um chanting with attention so there are many um offenses that we can commit while chanting the holy names of the lord and 
There are 10 actually from the Padma Purana. And then there is the 11th, which is called chanting inattentively. And it says that this chanting with inattention actually is the root cause of the first 10 offenses. Did you hear? So chant. Mataji, I have a question, Mataji. <laughs> when I chant, sometimes while chanting, I, I love music. So while chanting, I go into music mood, the chanting, and I, I just hold the chanting beat. But I'll just keep on singing Hare Krishna, different tunes. And I go into that. After a little while, I say, I did my mala didn't move. I was just singing. <laughs> but I don't know whether that is correct or not. I don't know. But I enjoy the tune and I think of the song and Krishna. I don't know. Chanting only. But my beats won't move. <laughs> Be that <So>, move, <laughs> right? For you to meet the goal. <laughs> I go in the I go in the tune and I just immerse in the music. That's yeah, it. yeah. Once I tried that, you know, I, I think ten years ago I tried that, <clears throat> and I sang, and it took me forty eight minutes to do one round. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I had, to, not realistic. I had to go and chant again. That, yeah, yeah. So, so there's japa and then there's kirtan. So japa is, is what we are, this is japa mala. We're supposed uh -huh. to japa. Yeah. And so it just, you know, you recite the names of the Lord need not be in a tune. It could be just the way you speak, you, you yeah. read it out. And, and then, and then, you know, once you 16 are done, right? Because you promise your spiritual master, you'll do 16. So that's why Adi, the rules for Vidyavali are different. <laughs> so yeah, be careful before you promise. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel she has to no. make, yeah, she has to do that 16, right? I do that. And and that is why we tell 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 those who initiates to chant the rounds in the morning because if we die during the day, yeah. we're not finishing the 16, then on that day we won't have fulfilled the promise to us, which is master. I right? so try to do it in the beginning itself. So yeah. So after you're done, um, you have a whole day to sing. But my weakness is well holding that, you know. Suddenly I go into that music thing. Yeah. Tune only I want to sing that Hare Krishna yeah. mantra. Yeah. That's a mind. You see? The yeah. mind forcefully carries away. Yeah. <laughs> a man, the person who's trying to control. See, this is what like, we have been reading that in Bhagavad Gita, right? The mind <laughs> forcefully carries away. This is what you are. This is the soul that is speaking, right? It's saying that I want to change the nouns properly. But the mind carries you away. Krishna. This is a practical example. Hare Krishna. It's a practical example of you know, how the mind carries you away. So what you can do is uh, before, before you do the, the japa, you have a sankalpa. You write it down that today I'm going to focus on that. And you know what, with the Avali Mataji, even after writing it down, your mind will still go away. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and so it has to be brought back. So you remember the mind is like a wild horse. And how do we tame a wild horse? The, the horseman is, we will tame the wild horse by climbing on the back, right? And we'll put a saddle and the horse refuses, refuses to be reined in, refuses. So he'll cl climb on the back and the horse will try to, you know, do all kinds of things, you know, raise it here in the hind leg so that the person falls down. It'll do all kinds of things, right? And, and also when, when you're pulling the rein, so the pulling the rein for the horse is that, hey, you can't go here and there. I'm pulling the rein, right? So you have to stay on, on, on the focus. The horse doesn't like it at all. So what we do is, what not we, but they, <laughs> the horse tamers, what they do is that when they are taming a wild horse, they will let go of the, of the rein a little bit. Right? Let go of the rein a little bit and then pull it back. So we can't be 100% strict on the mind and say like, you know, from tomorrow, everything is finished, you know, not like that. So, so be careful, be watchful and be alert when you are, when you're chanting to watch out for this and then maybe keep a little sheet of paper, but once you just put a one mark there, every time you catch your mind coming back and <laughs> count the marks and have a sankalpa that tomorrow I'm going to have less marks than what I got today for deviating from the chanting. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, and it takes long time for me to finish that one round. Because in between, my mind goes to the tune and singing. Yeah. yeah. Same japa only, but yeah. same you can, only. Yeah, you can scold your mind also. You know? The mind is subordinate to you. Panchit Tattva helps, right, Mataji? So we don't do Absolutely. offenses. Absolutely, yes. That's an absolute must, yeah. So, Hare Krishna, Mataji, sorry. 
So what are the 10 offenses while doing chanting you were? <laughs> Is somebody going to give me the 10 offenses? Vatam ninda namna paramam aparadam vitanate. Yes, do we remember? And I should just bring them up. They are available on... Um... Does anybody remember what they are? Yes. Please tell me. Thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I know them. Just, but, give them from, uh, just give them from the concept. You don't have to recite them verbatim. Just oh. conceptually what you understand, right? Um, um, can you start me off? <laughs> yeah, the first <laughs> offense is to blaspheme the devotees who have dedicated their lives okay. to chanting to, to the service okay. of the Lord. Okay. Okay, no, I, you can continue, Matt. Okay, okay. Let, let me let me bring that up because I, I think, I, and I'll also share I that. Know the order also, that's why. Okay. All right. So let I me just do that. They are very interesting, and since we're talking about book this, about um, devotional service, let me just bring them up. Yeah. So I might have them here. It's gone. Desire tree has got them. Ten offenses to the holy name. On, on Iskhan Desire Tree. You all know about Iskhan Desire Tree, do you? Yeah. Okay. So, 10 offenses is the holy name. I'm just bringing it up on a screen close to you. Yeah, this is the one. Here we go. Coming on a screen close by. Please confirm that you can see it on my desktop number two. Do you see that? Yes. All right. So the first is to blaspheme the devotees who have dedicated their lives for propagating the holy name of the Lord. So it is very, very um, serious offense. Krishna does not like it at all. It's listed as the first offense, which would mean that to criticize any of the Vaishnavas because they're all engaged in propagating the holy names of the Lord. So no matter what they do, apichet sudra charo, Right, so that's one. The second is to consider the names of the demigods like Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, to be equal to or independent of the name of Lord Vishnu, to think of them as you know the supreme personalities of Godhead, like that. Three, to disobey the orders of the spiritual master. It's a very serious offense, and very very serious. To blaspheme the Vedic scriptures, which would be Bhagavatam, Vedas, etc., or Scriptures in pursuance of the Vedic version. So if somebody has written a commentary on Bhagavatam or commentary on any Shat Sandarbha, the books, all that, to blaspheme that, criticize that is also an offense. To consider the glories of chanting Hare Krishna to be an imagination, right? Like I was telling Adi that the name itself will do it for you. Like, yeah, I don't believe it, <laughs> right? So that is a considering that, okay, I don't know what these Hare Krishnas do. They put their hands in a bead bag and they're constantly chanting like a parrot. They're just repeating it. I don't think there's any essence to it. Anybody can do it. What's the value? There's nothing. No, you're considering the glories of chanting Hare Krishna to be an imagination. It is not an imagination. It's a reality. To give some interpretations to the holy name of the Lord. It's trying to explain it away. Trying to give it a meaning. No. Even for the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Prabhupada sometimes explains it because people were asking, but he generally says, don't, don't even worry about that. Because the mantra, what is a mantra? It's a sound vibration that will um, deliver your mind, mantra, like that. So the sound vibrations are powerful. It's, in a mantra, it's not about understanding the mantras. The power of the mantra is that the moment you create that sound vibration, it will start having its effect. And that's why sometimes you see when the pundits come to do the puja and all that, they speak all the verses in such a fast speed. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a good idea, but you know, it'll still have the effect. And then to commit sinful activities on the strength of the holy name. And Prabhupada was very, very strong in this. And he used to say that, you know, it's not like you go into a confessional booth, confessional booth, and say that, you know, Father, I made this mistake. And they're like, okay, you chant the name of the Lord 100 times. And then you do that. And then come Monday, you again start your sinful activities. Why? Because you know that come Saturday, I can go and confess again. I will chant the name some more and I'll be absolved. So this is wrong. To commit sinful activities on the strength of the holy name is a big sin. Then to consider the chanting of the Hare Krishna as one of the auspicious ritualistic activities 
which are offered in the vedas as fruitive activities karma kanda so karma kandi activities are activities that you do where where the results are for you right i want to win i want to become the emperor of this world so i'm going to do this yagya right i want um, i want a beautiful body i want a beautiful husband i want a beautiful wife whatever i want right rich whatever i want then i'm doing these yagyas and these sacrifices but the aim, aim end result is to satisfy myself right so when you think that chanting of the holy name is also something like that which basically means that if i want to pass in the exams my exams are coming close and i want to pass the exams then let me chant the holy names of the lord because that will make me pass my exams no right holy name is transcendental and chanting of the holy names is a transcendent activity is meant to please the lord because you're calling out to krishna and that's very pleasing right and they, and and krishna really likes it when you when you call out his name um i remember when i was in india uh, we had a you know how you have those people who come and sweep their home they will sweep the courtyards and things like that so um so we had a, a big um big mango tree in our home and there were two big very big courtyards and the leaves would fall and they would cover all the courtyards so this lady would come and uh she would sweep uh, morning and evening and she had a um she had a i think a one and a half year old daughter who would follow so she would be bent and she would be sweeping and this daughter would be following and um and the daughter had just learned how to speak like mama or mommy or whatever and uh, and this this um this one who used to do the sweeping and all she was actually uh, she used to work in my school also as a as for for the same janitorial services and so the nuns in my school taught her english and she was very proud of that and so she was teaching english also to her kid and so, so that's why she was mommy right <laughs> she was not ma or whatever so the child would say mommy because they had child had just learned how to speak so it's we the little girl would say mommy and then she would say yes dear <laughs> and the child, not, then the child would not say anything because he doesn't know any further words than mommy right and then this mom will continue sweeping and after that the child would again say mommy and then she would say yes dear and then i was just observing i was 10 or 12 and i was just observing this nice exchange between mother and daughter <laughs> and that how nice how how good the mother felt just because the child was calling out the name of the mom and as many times as the child called out the name the mom was always responding very sweetly and saying yes my dear like that and so imagine when you call out the names of krishna with love and affection the kind of reciprocation krishna is going to going to give to you right so and we chant and he's going to be pleased and so that is what our aim is our our aim for chanting is to please krishna because he likes it like that and so it is not a karam kandi activity i cannot use chanting of the holy names of the lord for anything for my own gain right or my own pleasure like that the gains will come of their own accord that's a different thing but first we have to go to the right route there then we have to instruct a faithless person about the glories of the holy name this is also very important and sometimes this is a risk that we um, that we encounter when we go out on book distribution and that is that uh <clears throat> we might in our enthusiasm try to you know preach the glories of the holy name to a person and the more that we talk the more antagonistic he becomes right so then what what we are doing is that we are helping him by our conversation and by our extending the conversation we are helping the other person commit offenses against the holy name by becoming more and more antagonistic so we just you know that's why vaishya kabu always says that you preach the to the ripe souls those who are ready to receive and if they are not a ripe soul just let them be right and a very nice example prabhupad gives is that a mango is a mango whether it's raw or whether it is ripe it's just a matter of time that a raw mango will become a ripe mango but if it's a raw mango and if you try to pull it from a tree there's this the white sticky substance that comes with it and it'll drop in your hand it'll burn your hands right but if it's a ripe mango all that you have to do and i can attest to that because i had a mango tree in my home which i just talked about that mango tree if when it's ripe if you just go there and just touch it just touch it believe me it'll come into your hands straight away like that and if it's a raw mango it'll be hanging off a long you know long little twig and you try to pull it and then you know it won't it won't give you have to pull it really hard and in that process you'll break the twig and that white substance will come on your hands and i've experienced that also 
<laughs> like that. So, same thing here. Don't instruct to the faithless person. To not have complete faith in the chanting of the holy name and to maintain material attachment, even after understanding so many instructions on this matter, right? So that is a tenth offense. That, you know, after hearing about the holy name, of the glories of the holy name, right? And knowing, still you are maintaining material attachments. Now, don't feel overwhelmed. The tenth is offense is something that affects all of us because we all have material attachments, and the, material, and the holy name will will slowly, slowly, you know, remove those attachments. And removing the attachment doesn't mean that those people are going to go away. It's not that you are attached to your husband. So I'm not attached to my husband. Means he's going to die. It's not. It's not that. It's just that you won't be oh, just attached and you know be overwhelmed by. Your husband didn't smile at me today, so my day is finished. Not like that, right? So you will still continue to behave nicely. You will still have your sweet talks. You know, you'll still, you know, live civilly. But their activity, you are not dependent on their activities and what they say or don't say to you. you know, it doesn't affect you like that. That is detachment from the family. And then again, it says it's also an offense to be inattentive while chanting. Every devotee who claims to be a Vaishnava must guard against these offenses in order to quickly achieve the desired success, which is Krishna Prema. Prema Pumartha Mahan, that is the highest thing that we aim for. So those are the 10 offenses. Uh, Hare Krishna Madhuri, you said something, I just missed it. Mantra that delivers the? Mind. 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 Okay, I, I wrote that, but I wanted to. Yeah, tra means okay. to deliver. So where does it deliver? Thank you, Mataji. Yeah, like today is Friday. The pizza, the pizza boys are very uh, active on Fridays, right? They go and they deliver pizza. So what does the what does the mantra deliver? It delivers the mind. Okay, but where does it deliver? From which pizza shop does it pick the mind, and where does it put it? Right? So it delivers the mind from a lower consciousness to a higher consciousness. That's where the mind goes. Thank you. You're welcome. Who had asked this nice question? About the what are the offenses? Who asked? That, uh, that little kid. So. Me, Mata. Me, Mata. Oh, Adi. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Hare Krishna, Sradamati. So, um, as far as uh, the faithless and, you know, so forth, dialogue and right mango i mean it's, that's really difficult to tell right if you're uh, if you're distributing in a corporate environment or out on a street or even with people like you don't really know yeah you know um can you just like elaborate on that because that's i i think in the bhagavad gita it also says that uh, you're not supposed to um uh you know talk about krishna and and do this to people who become distressed right this is this is very um very very um it's not good to do that because you we could actually send them the other way right so just yeah. exactly so, so i don't you know this is where i'm i'm very careful on this front because i i do see people who get upset <laughs> yes. um yeah so can you tell us about your experiences there you know what i do if, if they get upset i immediately stop and so what Vaisheshika Prabhu says is that before you go out on book distribution, you take your hand behind your head and there's a little switch that you can find. And that <laughs> sensitivity switch, <laughs> you switch it off. <laughs> because there will be so many rejections during the day that you're out on the field. So people not listening to you, people arguing with you, people trying to you know, give, give you their um, scope and their idea about things, right? As long as I'm not, so my, it depends on my um, mood and my inner feelings which are there and my attitude. So if I'm going with that attitude that, you know what, hey, I'm the best scholar of the Bhagavad Gita 16 times and all of you, you're useless. Come here, listen, I'm the sage on the stage, right? That's one attitude. The other attitude is that I'm Krishna's servant. I'm trying to please Krishna by distributing his books and whatever happens, whoever takes or does not take, and this is a little prayer that I always do before I go on book distribution is that Krishna, I don't know who you have already decided is going to get which book today. <laughs> right? I just thank you for making me an instrument. And that's it. 
So when we go there with that mood, the moment we touch and feel and see, right, that um, that this person is not not interested and is being offensive or you know is even starting to blaspheme Krishna, we just you know we see we can stop that conversation by saying that you know we can agree to disagree, and everybody you know has a right to have their own religious freedom is the freedom that we all have. So um, so like that, right? Or sometimes when we go to distribute books, then you, you women say they will they'll be like, okay, Bhagavad Gita. Have you heard of Bhagavad Gita before? I am a born again Christian. Okay. <laughs> you hear that, right? So then you then you tell them, you know what? I'm so happy because this world needs more people like you, which is true. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's better to be a Christian, isn't it? To be a, rather than be a demon demon. Because they are they are devotees as well, right? So it'll be yeah. So slowly, slowly you learn the and pick up on the nuances, and then you'll just um, uh, come back. But however, we don't give up that easily. So we um, um, we try the pasadam route. So I think the word in the Gita it uses is not to disturb a person, right? I think it uses the word to yes. disturb. Yes. So I think. So I believe in the examples you gave, I think the disturbance has already happened though, right? You know, disturbances can happen. Well, the, that term disturbance can be used in so many, uh, from so many um, aspects, right? Like what am I, dis what is that disturbance that's being created, right? One disturbance I'm just creating is that, you know, uh, my conversation and we don't get along. There's a difference of opinion over there. So that's that disturbance is created because of the difference. Right. The second uh, disturbance that Krishna says is that, you know, sometimes we see people are so full of material enjoyment. They're constantly enjoying, they're falling down they're, they're, they you know, they were better off where they were, but they started this new venture. And because of this new venture, their whole life is completely gone. And then if you go start going and tell them that, you know, I think Prabhu, it's good that you stop whatever you're doing, give up and, you know, live, live a simple life, you know that will be very disturbing to them. <laughs> that state will be very disturbing to them and krishna says don't disturb they are doing it let them do because in in trying to go through the motion of whatever activity that they have set their mind they will learn their lessons ultimately and this is what this whole material world is about we created this material world to to uh, krishna created this material world for us to understand that we are not the controllers so when you see people, you know, going, doing a, we just pray to Krishna that Krishna, I know we are, try, you are trying to teach him a lesson and better let him learn the lesson sooner. So that the sooner he comes into devotional service, the sooner, you know, the better it is, right? Like that he has more time in this lifetime to pursue in the right direction. So as a preacher uh, that, that, who's, that who's going, um, there are so many things that, that, that a preacher has to do, right? The first thing is that um, achar. A preacher's achar means behavior. A preacher's behavior has to be good, right? So first we improve our behavior and it comes from, you know, how do you walk? How do you sit? How do you talk? That's the question Arjuna is also asking. So it comes from achar then. And then after that, you know, just achar is not enough. Just if just because I'm a good, behave, behave, well-behaved person is not enough for me to preach, right? Because I'm so well-behaved that anybody can sway me in any direction because I'm polite. Right? So together with good behavior, we also need to do some vichar. Vichar means like you, you think and you deliberate. Do you do vichar on what? On the shastras. So only after you have fortified yourself with achar and shastra vichar. After that, you can do prachar. Prachar is preaching. So achar, vichar, prachar. So we, we first fortify ourselves with all that. And then, now here's the amazing thing that um, devotees who get started in the beginning and they start feeling rejection. And, you know, I used to be rejected left, right, and center, and I still am rejected. And then one day I went with Daisha Jukapapu for book distribution. And so it was a whole, whole team and I was, you know, we were tagging him, so I was tagging him. We, Everybody took turns because everybody wants to tag with Baja Chikapabu. So I was tagging him, and which means that you stay next to him when he's um, delivering his uh, speech on the book. And everybody took the book, whether they were white or black or Indian or not Indian, everybody took a book and gave him Lakshmi. And I was like, what is that? 
what is this happening <laughs> you know i beg and you know, i did nothing happens right? like that so then you know i realized that what i'm trying to do is <clears throat> I'm trying to attract the minds of the person who's on the other side of the door when I knock the door. So I'm trying, so if they are, I'm trying to be the magnet that attracts those iron filings, so to speak. So nothing happens. And then Veshishika Prabhu goes and the doors fly open and the people come and, and they are attracted. What's the difference? Because the difference is in the strength of the magnet. He's a powerful magnet. Powerful magnets have the power to attract others. And so, and that, where is that power coming from? That power is the power of devotional service. So that is why when Adi Mataji was saying, what is the first thing that I should do? You have to chant. Because when you are at, at because chanting is going to give you devotional strength and devotional energy. And that will attract the minds of your kids because she's a mom with little kids, right? So she, she has to attract the minds of the kids, but how will she attract the minds of the kids? By first elevating herself to that level, be charged with, with devotional service in the morning. And that's why we say, try to do the things in the morning. And if you can, then, you know, at least have half the weapons there. Jan one in the morning, one in the evening. That's why we told her that. Mm -hmm. So so all that we have to do is to chant. The, so it becomes very simplistic. And I'm giving you the standard answer that... that um, that Iskon gives for everything. <laughs> chant, right? Sit down and chant, sit down and chant. But that is what is the truth. It is. It's the yuga dharma. It's the duty of the of the yuga. This kali yuga. That is the duty of you know for us. That that's what we are supposed to do. Like that. Okay. Thank you, Thank Krishna Thank you, Krishna uh, Yeah. It must have been a very great experience to be taking Vaisesika Prabhu. I can just imagine what you must have, go, uh, the good feeling that you probably were feeling that day and that he passed it on to you how to distribute. That is true. And, and you know what? These vibrations don't need proximity, Meera Madhuji. The fact that you're distributing books, the fact that he knows you, that knows that you're distributing books. Wow. And he does. <laughs> I told him. <laughs> One day, someday when I'm there, I'll have to go with you to see him. <laughs> Absolutely. He'll be delighted. Yeah. 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 He'll be just delighted. Um, okay. Yeah. It is. It, it, it was in the idea yeah, in those days when he was, he was available more freely. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, well, can I ask you a quick question here? Yes. I still owe $16 and you said PayPal. <laughs> so how do I, how, who do I pay through PayPal? Now, we are broadcasting on Facebook. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> you can go to sponsorgeeta.com. Right. Okay. Thank you for asking that question because now I'm broadcasting on Facebook. Now people can donate. <laughs> <laughs> they can go to sponsorgeeta.com. Okay. Website, and you can go and donate there. We'll come to know about it. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank See, this is, the, this is the heart of a devotee. The $16 that Meera Matiti is talking about is the money that she collected while she was distributing books. And she doesn't want to keep Krishna's money with her. She's been, you know, for the last two weeks, she's been telling me, I want to give it back. Here, the Matiti tell me. And I'm like, wait, I'm working on the marathon school. <laughs> we'll take it, we'll take it, hold on. <laughs> but a devotee is always, you know, cognizant that tena tak tena bhunjita you take only that much that has been set aside as your koda. And our, and our thought always is that what if I die and the Lakshmi is still with me? So it's a good, it's a good feeling that, that you have, that good agitation that you have in the mind. I have to give the Lakshmi back to where it belongs. Mataji, may I uh, say uh, uh, my experience? Uh, Mataji, I was distributing Bhagavad Gita and um, you see when I went to a shop, there was a lady who, who was buying something and uh, I offered uh, Bhagavad Gita to her and uh, in English, so I thought she will um, prefer English. So I um, gave her the English book. She said, no, I'm Christian. I said, no problem. Uh, you must be reading Psalms uh, in Bible because they are very interesting and uh, very educative. I have read them. And she said, wait a minute. How do you know about Psalms? I said, I have read about Psalms. I, I've gone through a little. I was teaching in a Christian school and in the break, I used to go to the chapel and pick up 
Bible and read the Psalms. Somebody told me read it, and I am very interested. She said, "How? What? What is? What about Bhagavad Gita? What all is there?" So I just opened it and little bit whatever that time I could tell, I told her. She said, "Wait a minute, I will buy it because it will help me." Uh, to give the examples when I'm teaching Bible to others. So she took Bhagavad Gita Mataji. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. When you get started. Hold down on that screen that you had. I just want to see the picture at the beginning of the page. Oh, that uh, the, the offenses to the holy name of the Lord? Yeah. That one? Yeah. <clears throat> Have you closed it already? Oh, okay. This one? Oh, yeah. The, the also, yeah. Also okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Because Ved Vyasa is there because this is from Padam Purana, right? And he documented the Puranas. That's why his name is there. Yeah. Yeah. Mataji, since I have you today, I had that first uh, uh, Amazonian, like, crowd going to Maharaji's lecture at 12 uh, p.m., the corporate lecture that he does for everybody. And I got like 70 people. Seven I was not, yeah, 70 people. Wow. Amazon. wow. Did you tell him? Uh, I mean, I told, I told J.M. Prabhu, who leads the digital marketing team. So I'm very happy about that. Wow. Look at that. And this uh, devotee two months ago was saying that nothing is going to happen in Amazon. <laughs> Yes, I was ready to quit. Now I have a reason to be here. <laughs> reason to be there, yeah. 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 There you go. Hare Krishna Mataji. I just have like a little just a reflection. Um yeah. we were, you know, chanting. I, I feel some days I'm very anxious and I just cannot do anything. I just don't want to uh, read Bhagavad Gita because I'm too anxious and I cannot like you know even even though i'll force myself that let me just read one one shloka just so that i have fulfilled my day of that i read a little bit but i am anxious and i cannot read but i still feel chanting is easy because you are not you don't have to understand anything you don't have to learn anything you just have to you know just chant so that is still doable you know even if you do little bit it is doable there you go adi manji a reflection for you Right, and then the days that you feel agitated, um, you should also sit down and analyze the reason for the agitation. And uh, if there's something that is agitating you because uh, there's some deadline to be met, some, some chore to be done at the home, oh, I have to remember to do this, or people are coming, I need to clean the fridge, and et cetera, keep a paper and a pencil right next to you. And, and the thing about the mind is that as the mind is giving you thoughts and they are coming and they will keep on coming again and again, but the moment you manifest them, manifest the thought, you know, by writing them down. So now they have a form, right? Otherwise, there's, there's, the thought is coming in your head that I have to clean the refrigerator, that's all. But the moment you write it down in English, I have to clean the refrigerator, now it is manifested. And so then the mind calms down, you know, after, <laughs> after manifesting it, so it calms down. Then, okay, it's done. Now, refrigerator, yes, I will not forget. It's written down there, now let me chant. So that's one thing that, that you can do. Another reason is also see how you, how, how you have slept well. Did you sleep well? If you don't sleep well, then the rounds are not good. Also see of what you have eaten, you know, the night before, did you eat late? If you eat late, then the next day, the rounds are bad, like that. So there's a whole thing that goes into, you know, what makes it down good or not. Again, on the days that you are, that your mind is preoccupied, I would use that word and not agitated <laughs> because I can't, I can't correlate word agitation and you together, Simi Mataji. <laughs> So the, the day that you are, the mind is, you know, uh, disturbed or going here and there and not focusing and, and, and doesn't want to focus on reading the Bhagavad Gita, you know, you can still fool the mind by saying, okay, I'm just going to play the recording of Bhagavad Gita. I'm not doing anything. There's something else that is disturbing me right now. I have to do this. I have to take care. Okay. Let the Bhagavad Gita run. I'm going to clean that fridge. <laughs> and that is vibrations from Bhagavad Gita themselves will be purifying and those vibrations will calm down your mind and your fridge will be clean. <laughs> Thank you, Mataji. Also, Mataji, I wanted to share just before beginning of the class, I was talking to my mom in India. So I just said, you know, my class is starting. Uh, I'm just going to put you like, you know, just listen, just so till your prayers, I asked her to listen. So she listened. 
uh, till then i was very happy that she was able to wow look at that yes yes um i was once um, about the prayers and vibrations and how even a little bit of a vibration is uh, i was actually um in in mayapur in vaishishka prabhu's um, yatra so the how the yatra goes is that you know you get up early in the morning if you can and vaishana mata ji is always there with me so i know you get up in the morning and you go for mangalati which means you get up at 3:30 in the morning get ready and all that walk to the temple participate in mangal aarti and then there is a chanting session after that there is shrimad bhagavatam class by the time it's done it's 8 o'clock in the morning then you come back walk back have some prasadam and you just have bare time enough time to pick up the books and then go on parikrama and then you do the parikrama the whole day and then you come back by the time you're back it's about 2 o'clock then you have your prasadam by the time it's done it's 3 o'clock and then 4 o'clock there's a class on bhagavatam chaitanya charitamrita and things like that so uh there was a elderly lady who had come to the yatra and so but she was very enthusiastic and she was there with us throughout the parikrama that day so then in the in the evening when the class was going to happen i i just out of politeness right and not knowing my dharma properly again what is duty what is not duty i told her that you know what you are so tired you must be so tired and you have to get up in the morning tomorrow so why don't you why don't you just skip the class and and you know just sleep in a little bit in the in the afternoon because this class is going to be in english and she did not understand a word of english so then she said no it doesn't matter because whatever he's going to speak whatever language he's going to speak it's a transcendental vibration even if i sit in the class without understanding a word of it it will have its effect on me and that was my eye opener you know like wow never underestimate anybody you know and so her duty she knew her duty much better than i knew what her duty was <laughs> what i knew what my duty was <laughs> as a person organizing it right so yeah Vibration. yeah she didn't she couldn't understand like you know the uh, it was not very clear but i said just stay till the prayers and so she just uh, you know but yeah. maybe next time i will keep it keep her longer so that she can as you said even if it is in english the vibrations are going so are going so and there's sanskrit yeah <laughs> yeah yeah the day your mom comes we can recite the bhagavad gita in sanskrit okay <laughs> right we can do that <laughs> thank you mata ji hari krishna welcome thank you for sharing that now, adi mata ji is already now thinking who all can she invite <laughs> i could judge by that expression on the face yeah so you know what we didn't do bhagavatam today but it's 13 minutes past <laughs> I just want to say thank you Mata ji for helping me understand how I can turn everything in my life into a devotional service. There you go. Yes. So yes. I I at work Amazon is it's a boys club and it used to really bother me but because of reading chanting and just getting your guidance I don't worry about it and it doesn't it doesn't bother me anymore. There is there is this effect that I have seen in me. Right. Right. It's not a it's not a boys club it's actually a, a souls club and recently of uh, the CEO of um VMware he took over as the CEO of Intel and uh Mata ji your your prabhu ji sent me a link describing him and and it was amazing you know i'm i'm i don't remember the words completely but instead of saying that you know i lead a company with 250000 employees he was saying i lead 250000 souls this was such a refreshing <laughs> vocabulary from a person at the level of a ceo so um yes so in amazon is full of souls remember that some have men's body some have women's body we don't care the vibration is going to affect them like that yeah and krishna empowered you to go write that letter reach out to them speak the right words because why because you had a strong desire in your heart house and fire desire is a secret to success like that. Yeah. Any last words anybody wants to say? So today we became a book distribution <laughs> <laughs> session. <laughs> What triggered so nicely by Aruni Mata ji giving us such a fantastic story. <laughs> Learned a lot today Mata ji. Thank you so much for all the reflections from everybody. I learned so much today. I'm glad that Krishna thank you so much
Mataji was also a great, great. Sorry, sorry, Sonia Mataji, you were still talking. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It was also a, uh, you know, for us, uh, for everybody, to the chanting, uh, proper chanting, and you know, uh, that was another lesson chanting. today. That was very good. Right, right, right. So I'm going to send you the link to this chanting of the offenses to the holy name of the Lord. On yes, Mataji, I want that too. I'll, I'll put it on our WhatsApp group so that you'll get that. Okay. Uh, for those, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we can do that. And then let me just do that. If you can confirm, then that'll be great. And as a comment, to um, so those of you watching us here on, on Facebook, I have put the link to the 10 offenses of the holy name on the Facebook. And the Zoom users, um, you get that here. There you go. I put it there. Only thing, Mataji, after my initiation, I came to San Jose and I'm not able to see Guru Maharaj in print up face to face. And then I cannot go to the temple here also. So that I sometimes I feel very disgraced, Mataji. No. I don't know when. Maybe. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The holy name is with you. Yes, that is there, but I the feel absence, absence, I'm just watching his classes anyway. Yes, yes. And and but, then absence makes the heart grow fonder, right? When you're separated. I, I read the chapter, um, Krishna returns to Dwarka. I think it's the 13th chapter in the first canto, Srimad Bhagavatam. And it okay. talks about that that the queens were separated from him for a very long time, right? He had yeah. gone to Mahabharat year, then he stayed back for three more months and three more months. And so so when he comes back and so there's a reaction of his wives is mentioned there in Srimad Bhagavatam. And there it says that the, the wives were never separated from Krishna because when Krishna was away, they were always thinking about him. So you can be connected with someone through your thoughts or you can be connected to them through your eyes, right? Like I'm looking at you right now, but the rest of the day I can think about you after this session, right? So that way there will never be any separation. And this is such a fantastic mechanism. This human body is such a fantastic mechanism that you have a mind where you can do a replay, right? And then get associated with the people that you're missing in the, in the, you know, in the realm of your mind. You can really- I got a card from them, you know, Nirakla Mataji and Vaisheshika Prabhu. So what is, what are you thinking? What are you, what, you, what, you, what is next? Something I, I forgot. But you know, when I saw that with their signatures, I said, you know what? I, I was in Philadelphia, but I came close to this place and close to temple. And I cannot go to the temple. I cannot see Guru Maharaj. And then they both signed the thing, uh, that signature I saw. And then I said, what is this? I am away from them. Uh, though I, I got initiated, I asked for it. I got it. But still, that makes me a little... <laughs> yeah and and this intense separation we should also feel that the one that you're feeling for your spiritual master will then will then you know take on another shape and you'll start feeling that intense separation from krishna i don't know if i was feeling so much coming here and i i just said and i came to san jose but what is this going on though i was initiated but i'm not able to see and go to the temple and seeing the spiritual master are not connected. <laughs> not connected. Connected. But <laughs> when but Vashika was, was initiated, Srila Prabhupada was not even there. Vashika Prabhu was distributing books there. His beats came through uh, through the mail. He didn't even receive That's how I got it. <laughs> there you go. So you are, you are among the elite <laughs> who get into the mail, right? The special, the COVID initiates. Look at yeah. Okay, so on that happy note, um, we will uh separate <laughs> and then assemble again tomorrow at uh, 6 p.m tomorrow is different for this class but then we'll have an opportunity of of, of being connected with vaishishika prabhu at seven o'clock in the morning on this con silicon valley channel thank you so much for joining us those of you who are watching us and achana mataji is there on facebook right now and in addition to you know our dear devotees who were there and um all of you, dear devotees who come. Thanks and for the, all the 
good tips today, Mataji. There you go. The tips are coming from the <laughs> parampara. There's nothing for came from my side. <laughs> Vancha kalpata rubhyascha kripa sindhu vyayevacha patita nam pavne bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo namaha gaur primanamaye hari hari bo dandu pranams to all of you. Hari Krishna. 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 Hari